Hi, I'm Dr. Michelle Lee, a board-certified ophthalmologist and cataract surgeon. Today, I'll be answering your questions about cataracts and cataract surgery. I want to thank all of you who submitted thoughtful and interesting questions. I did my best to select questions that I get asked most frequently in the comments section, as well as those I get asked during my time prepping thousands of patients for their cataract surgery. Let's get started. I got asked a few questions about diet or nutritional supplements that can cure or prevent the formation of cataracts. Let me start off by saying that we will all develop a cataract or a cloudy lens inside the eye if we live long enough. There are factors that we cannot control like age, genetics, certain disease processes that we have. And then there are factors that we can control, excessive UV exposure, smoking, alcohol, and yes, our diet. There is some evidence that certain vitamins like vitamin A, C, E, lutein, and zeaxanthin may slow progression of cataracts. You can take these naturally by eating a diverse and healthy diet with lots of fresh vegetables like spinach, Swiss chard or kale or as a supplement. I also got a lot of questions about eye drops to cure and prevent cataracts like NAC, linostrol, and antioxidant eye drops, as well as treatments that may reduce the need for cataract surgery. The official answer is that there is no FDA approved eye drop that can prevent or treat cataracts. However, there are certain compounds that are being studied for efficacy and it is too early to say. Most of the studies that have been published are either animal studies or sponsored by companies that are formulating these eye drops. I will make a future video describing some of the current findings and the current compounds that are being studied. I did get quite a few questions about certain eye conditions and how they relate to cataract surgery. So a common question that I get asked is if there is any concern with double vision. There are two types of double vision. There is the kind of double vision where you get two images out of one eye, and that is called monocular double vision. And that usually has to do more with a refractive error or something like an irregular cornea or even a cataract in that eye. Or there's binocular double vision, which has to do more with alignment of the two eyes. Someone with binocular double vision will see one image when closing one eye, one image when closing another eye, and two images when opening both eyes. If you have constant binocular double vision and require glasses called prism glasses to correct some of that doubling, you will most likely need to wear double vision glasses even after your surgery. Unless there's been other issues to the eye itself, double vision should not make the cataract surgery any more complicated. But one consideration is that if you were thinking about a premium lens or a type of lens that's not covered by insurance, these lenses may not be as useful since you will most likely need to wear glasses to correct a double vision after your surgery. How does LASIK affect cataract surgery in the future? Refractive surgeries such as LASIK, PRK, and SMILE are amazing life-changing procedures that can correct an eye that has previously depended on glasses or contact lenses. But one of the main issues that comes into play in an eye that's had refractive surgery is that our lens calculations are a little trickier since traditional lens calculations do not account for anatomical differences in eyes that have had refractive surgery. Thankfully, our lens calculations have really come a long way. There is still a risk of being a little bit off with our calculations despite our best efforts. So make sure you discuss your specific situation with your surgeon. One newer solution that may help alleviate some of that risk is the light adjustable lens. This is a type of lens that can actually be adjusted after implantation using UV treatment. This lens is not for everyone. It does require a few adjustments. And you may have to exercise an abundance of caution when you're performing outdoor activities for a few weeks to a few months after the surgery. There were also a lot of questions about dry eye and dry eye syndrome, such as Sjogren's syndrome, and considerations when it comes to cataract surgery. So there are actually several different types of dry eye. 
There is the type of dry eye where you make tears and the type of dry eye where you don't make tears. Regardless of the type of dry eye you have, it is really important that you address this ahead of time before your surgery because the presence of dry eye will actually affect your lens calculations and may result in incorrect measurements. It's also important that your dry eyes are under good control after your surgery because your dry eye symptoms will only get worse and you want to really make sure that your symptoms are manageable after your surgery. I also received a lot of questions about types of lenses and for some general information about lens types, I'll have you check out my video which I'll link below about the best lenses for cataract surgery. And I also got some very good more specific questions about lenses. One viewer was asking if there was a difference between a clear or a yellow tinted lens. This is a debate amongst eye surgeons and the short answer is that both a clear tinted and a yellow tinted lens are better than having a significant cataract inside your eye. Lenses with a yellow tint can filter out some of the blue light, the thought being that the blue light might be harmful to your retina. The yellow tinted lens does result in a warmer hue. The clear tinted lens does not filter out blue light and will result in a cooler hue and a bluish tint to your vision. So objectively, when patients with a clear tinted lens and patients with a yellow tinted lens were tested for color differentiation, there was no statistically significant difference. And the differences are mostly subjective based on patient experiences with color perception. If I don't get a multifocal eye well, would glasses with progressive lenses be a good option after cataract surgery? Yes, wearing glasses after cataract surgery is always a great option. If you end up getting the standard lens or the lens covered by insurance, you will most likely need glasses for something, whether it's just reading or everything, distance, computer, and reading. In those cases, wearing bifocal or progressive glasses is always a great option. What is dropless cataract surgery? Dropless cataract surgery is when your eye surgeon injects medications into your eye so that you don't need to use eye drops after surgery. This can be a really convenient option, but some patients are just not a good candidate for dropless surgery, like those who have issues with high eye pressures or those who have a lot of pre-existing allergies. If you're interested, just be aware that not every surgeon or surgery center will offer dropless cataract surgery. So talk to your eye surgeon and see if this is an option that is available to you. Can you do both eyes at the same time? This is a bit of a controversial question at the time of filming. Some eye doctors and hospitals will perform bilateral eye surgery or eye surgery done at the same time. The thought being that it could save you some time since you just have to come and prepare for one surgery. The reason why most surgeons in the United States still don't do bilateral cataract surgery is because there is one risk of surgery that we're all extremely afraid of and that is an infection. And eye infections usually turn up within a week after surgery. In my practice, I don't do bilateral eye surgery, but there are definitely those who do. In the future, once we've optimized our infection risk, this may be a more common offering. I got a lot of questions asking about anesthesia during cataract surgery and whether there is an option to have general anesthesia in order to be put out completely. Most surgeons offer conscious sedation, which is when you're awake, but maybe not aware during your surgery. And regardless, you should be extremely comfortable. Some some surgeons will also perform an eye block called a retrobulbar block, which completely paralyzes and numbs the eye for up to eight hours. For any children or adults with severe dementia, we may actually perform the surgery under general anesthesia. This is because under the microscope, even a little bit of eye movement would be very significant. Regardless of what type of anesthesia you receive, you want to stay very still during your surgery. I take medications for prostate problems. As a result, my eyes dilate very little during my eye exams. How would this affect cataract surgery? There is a medication called Tamsulosin, brand name Flomax, that is commonly prescribed for benign prosthetic hyperplasia or BPH, which is a common condition that affects three out of four men over the age of 70. This medication can actually block your eye from dilating and cause what we call intraoperative floppy iris syndrome or IFIS, which means that the iris or the colored part of your eye 
may actually get in the way of your surgery and result in a higher risk of complications. Your surgeon probably wants to know this information ahead of time because sometimes we'll use a device to dilate the pupil so that the iris won't get in the way. These issues with Flomax will happen even if you don't take Flomax currently during the time of your surgery. So it's really important that you tell your eye surgeon and the team that you've taken Flomax at any point. Many patients who are on Flomax have undergone successful cataract surgery procedures, so this is definitely not a deterrent to proceeding with your cataract surgery. What are general precautions after the procedure? Your surgeon should be giving you a list of activities that you can and cannot do after your surgery. The precautions that I tell my own patients are no heavy lifting more than 20 pounds, no bending forward, no eye rubbing, and wear an eye shield at night for about one week. This is because the wounds that we use to open your eye to access the cataract during surgery are still open, and there's always a fear that by straining or putting pressure, you may accidentally open the wound and expose your eye to things like infection. Another important precaution is to avoid swimming or hot tub use for up to one month, and this is because still pools of water actually have a lot of bacteria, fungi and parasites, and we definitely don't want those getting in or around your eye after eye surgery. How long does it take to heal? That really depends on several factors, how dense your cataract is, how fast of a healer you are in general, whether there were any other add-on procedures during your surgery. In a non-complicated routine cataract surgery, healing can take anywhere from one day to about one week, and the average patient will start to notice that their vision's clear about two to three days after their surgery. If you do take longer than a week to have clearer vision, I recommend that you talk to your eye doctor about your specific specific case to make sure there are no urgent issues with your eye. High eye pressures after surgery. Is this normal? So this is common but not normal. Right after eye surgery you can have high eye pressures and this is due to a variety of factors. For example, excessive inflammation inside your eye or bleeding inside your eye or a really watertight wound. A very common reason for temporarily elevated eye pressure is some retained jelly inside your eye and this jelly is called viscoelastic. This is a jelly-like substance that's put in your eye during surgery to maintain the structure of your eye so it does not collapse during certain steps of the surgery. And while your surgeon will take extra care to remove as much of that viscoelastic as he or she can, sometimes there is a residual amount that may actually clog your drainage system and result in temporarily high eye pressures. One of the reasons why we see you at that day one post-operative appointment is to check your eye pressure because sometimes we have to treat those high eye pressures with eye drops. Sometimes we'll actually take fluid out of the eye if the pressure is high enough. And most of the time, this does not mean you have glaucoma or any kind of disease associated with high eye pressures. This is simply a side effect of the surgery. Having high eye pressures after cataract surgery does not mean you have glaucoma, but the risk of this slightly increases if you have issues with the outflow system of your eye. How long does the new lens last? Modern day lenses, should last a lifetime. This is usually a one and done procedure. This also means that you should put some thought in considering your lens choices prior to proceeding with surgery, since most likely the lens will stay in there forever. Will I need to update my contacts and or glasses prescription after surgery? Most likely yes. During your eye surgery, the new lens inside your eye will actually change the focal point of your eye, so most likely you'll need to update any glasses or contact lens prescriptions that you already have. If you need a new prescription, you can ask your eye surgeon or your eye doctor for a script after you've healed up from surgery. Do I need to have both eyes operated on? Technically, you do not need to have any eye operated on. Cataract surgery is an elective procedure, meaning that the majority of the time, the cataract is not harming the eye. There are rare situations where the cataract is blocking the outflow system of your eye, or the cataract is impairing the view of the retina, or other parts of the back of the eye that are imperative to treatment. And in those cases, it is necessary to proceed with cataract surgery. But besides that, the decision to pursue surgery is your choice. 
you definitely don't need to do a second eye surgery if you're doing well after your first eye surgery. One benefit of doing the second eye is that you may have overall better vision and probably better 3D vision with both eyes operated on. But if you're not sure whether you need to proceed with your second eye, I highly advise you discuss this with your eye doctor. I got a lot of questions more than I could answer in this video. So if I did not get to your specific question, please leave a comment down below. And if there's enough interest, I'll film another Q&A. Feel free to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.